Good morning, students. Today we are going to start with the poem "The Labanum Top" by Ted Hughes. This poem has been taken from your textbook Hornbill. Ted Hughes was an English poet, translator, and children's writer. Critics frequently rank him as one of the best poets of his generation. and one of the 20th century's greatest writer he was appointed poet laureate in 1984 and held the office until his death in 2008 the times ranked hughes fourth on their list of the 50 greatest british writers since 1945 hughes poetic work is rooted in nature he wrote frequently of the mixture of beauty and violence in the natural world animals serve as a metaphor for his view on life now let's discuss about the title of the poem the poem has been named the labanum top as the entire scenario revolves around the tree the labanum tree symbolizes the pattern of our lives in general it is the attitude of a person that makes life meaningful and happy just as the goldfinch brought cheer happiness life and mirth to the simple quiet and death like labanum top the top of the tree has been described in detail by the poet and the second part is a vivid description of the change that the tree undergoes theme of the poem the main theme of the poem is mutual benefit the poet expresses the idea that life is a process of exchange and transformation the poet talks about the mutual relationship between the labanum tree and the goldfinch the poet has used the labanum top and the goldfinch as a symbol of life and its fluctuations the bird takes away the dead silence of the tree and the tree gives shelter to the bird so in this poem we see two stages in the first stage the labanum tree is silent and dead in the second stage we find a change in the action of the tree and finally the tree again returns to the same mode that is being silent and dead now let's start with the poem and understand the labanum top is silent quite still in the afternoon yellow september sunlight a few leaves yellowing all its seeds fallen so now let's understand Labanum also known as golden chain or golden rain is a short tree with hanging branches yellow flowers and poisonous seeds In this poem the poet describes his experience of what he witnesses on the labanum top He begins by describing the tree In September the labanum tree appears yellow in color due to drying up of leaves it shines and looks yellow due to sunshine during a september afternoon the poet notices the top of the labanum tree that is quiet calm and still the leaves are yellowing and the seeds have fallen the tree looks yellow as the sunlight falls on it the labanum tree seems to be dead and motionless the poet has used yellow for the leaves and sunlight yellow symbolizes silence death and beauty we notice in this first paragraph a poetic device that is alliteration alliteration is a figure of speech where the same sound is repeated 
An example of alliteration here in the first paragraph is September sunlight. So as the poem begins, we see that the laburnum top is silent and there is no motion in it. Till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end. Then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of chitterings and a tremor of wings and trillings. The whole tree trembles and thrills. So in the second paragraph, we find a change. Suddenly, a goldfinch, that is, a bird with yellow feathers on its wings, lands on the tree. The lifeless tree becomes alive. The bird arrives at the end of the branch with a chirping sound. The chirping of the bird is delicate, soft and gentle. The sound of the goldfinch is delicate and seemed like whisperings. The tree is her shelter where the bird has come to feed her younger ones. The arrival of the goldfinch causes the atmosphere of suddenness and surprise in the branch end. So we can see here that by the coming of the goldfinch on the tree, there is a sudden change on the tree. The tree that seemed to be motionless and silent and quiet was now going to change. Then the bird enters into the dense area of the tree, sleek as a lizard. Here we find that another poetic device has been employed, that is simile, which helps in explaining the coming of the goldfinch more effectively. The movement of the bird is compared to that of a lizard. Just as the lizard is alert and quick in its movement, so is the goldfinch here in the poem. Her movement, just like the lizard, is sleek, smooth, alert and abrupt. In the second line of the second paragraph, we again find an example of alliteration, that is, a suddenness, startlement. Then in the third line, we find the use of a simile, sleek as a lizard. As the goldfinch enters the thickness of the tree, let's see what happens. As soon as the bird enters the dense area of the tree, her younger ones start making noises. They start flapping their wings, making vibrations in the tree. It seems as if a machine starts up because of the bird and her young ones the tree starts to shake and vibrate. The poet here has given two separate scenarios of the tree. At first, the tree seemed silent like death. Now it is alive and full of life, giving shelter to the goldfinch and her younger ones. Now let's understand what do we mean by a machine starts up. Here the poet creates the imagery of a machine. The sudden noise and movements produced by the young ones are like starting of a machine. The goldfinch feeds her younger ones while in turn imparts energy and life to them as they make sounds and flap their wings. By machine we mean here the younger ones of the goldfinch because they start to make noise as they see their mother. They flap their wings and they make a lot of noise. This in turn makes the tree come alive and the tree trembles and thrills. So again in the line the whole tree trembles and thrills we find an example of alliteration that is tree trembles. Tree trembles 
is also an example of personification. Personification is a figure of speech where human characteristics are attributed to non-living things. So to make it more clear, we can understand that as the younger ones of the goldfinch make noise and they flap their wings, the tree begins to vibrate, the tree trembles, the tree thrills. So this is again an example of personification. A metaphor is a figure of speech where an indirect comparison between two things is made. So a machine starts up is an example of a metaphor. It is the engine of a family. She strokes it full, then flirts out to a branch end, showing her barred face identity mask. Now let's understand these lines. Engine represents the mother goldfinch and machine represents the nest with its younger ones. Just as the engine starts up the machine, the arrival of the goldfinch on the tree has started up the silent machine, that is, the younger ones have started chattering and making noises. The whole tree becomes alive. It trembles and thrills. The bird is compared to the engine as she is the one who feeds her family. As the machine cannot work without the engine, the family of the goldfinch can't last without her. The engine of a family is again an example of metaphor where the goldfinch is compared to the engine. She stokes it full then flirts out to a branch end showing her barred face identity mask. Now she stokes it full. It means that she has fed her younger ones who now have the energy to make noise and be active. After that the goldfinch moves out in a short time and goes to the branch end where her face remains partly visible. The bars on her face serve as a mask for her identity. Now let's understand this phrase, barred face identity mask. This phrase is an example of transferred epithet. What is a transferred epithet? It is a figure of speech in which An adjective is transferred from one noun to another. When the goldfinch lands on the tree, it seems as if the leaves of the tree camouflage the bird or hides the bird. When the bird sits behind the flowers, the shadow of the leaves fall like bars on the face of the bird and it seems as if the bird is wearing a mask. Hence, barred face identity mask. So bar is actually an adjective for the flowers and has been transferred from there and applied to the bird. Barred face is the bird's face striped with shadows which is as though she is wearing a mask. Hence the bird's face became her identity and symbol of recognition. So barred face identity mask, we, um, we mean that the shadow of the leaves was falling on the face of the bird that in turn looked as if her face had bars or stripes and so it seemed as if she was wearing a mask. So now her face is very very recognizable. We can understand her or we can identify her with the help of her face. Barred face identity mask is also an example of metaphor. Then with airy delicate whistle chirrup whisperings, she launches away towards the infinite and the labanum subsides to empty. So this phrase expresses the soft, delicate, gentle and mysterious chirrup of the goldfinch which seems like a whisper. Finally, the goldfinch leaves the tree and the labanum top becomes calmer, quieter and empty. So there is a similarity 
between the beginning and the end of the poem. In both the situations, the tree is silent and still. But this time, the silence brings a note of emptiness in the poem, after all the commotion that the goldfinch caused. When she left, the laburnum top subsides to empty. In this paragraph, we again find an example of alliteration, that is, whistle, chirrup, whisperings. So now we have seen that the poem The Laburnum Drop has been divided into three parts. In the very first part, we had seen that the laburnum top is quiet and silent. In the second part, we had seen how a goldfinch bird lands on the tree and changes the entire scenario. There is commotion because of the chirpings, noise and flapping of the wings of her younger ones. We have also seen the use of poetic devices in the second paragraph. Coming to the final paragraph, we had seen how the la laburnum top again goes back to silence as the goldfinch leaves the top. It again becomes quite empty and still. So I hope this poem is now clear to everyone. You can read the lines, you can understand the poetic devices used, you can understand the meanings of the difficult words given and if you have questions, you can ask. Now let's see the poetic devices in short. Now let's see the poetic devices used in the poem. The first one is alliteration. It is a figure of speech where the same sound is repeated. The examples that we find in the poem are September sunlight, where S sound is repeated. Suddenness, a startlement, where S sound is repeated. The whole tree trembles, here T sound is repeated. And whistle, chirrup, whisserings. Here, doubly sound is repeated. Now, the second poetic device is simile. It is a figure of speech where two things are compared using like or as. The example that we find in the poem is sleek as a lizard. Here, we compared the goldfinch to the lizard. The movement of the goldfinch is compared to that of a lizard. The third is metaphor. A metaphor is a figure of speech where an indirect comparison is made between two things without the use of like or as. The examples that we find in the poem are a machine starts up of chitterings, the engine of a family, her bad face identity mask. I have already explained these phrases in the second paragraph. By machine, we have understood that it refers to the younger ones of the goldfinch. The engine of a family is the goldfinch. Her barred face identity mask is a metaphor where the face becomes a symbol of recognition and identity for the goldfinch. The next poetic device used in the poem is personification. It is a figure of speech where human characteristics are attributed to non-living things. The example from the poem is the whole tree trembles and thrills. So here the tree has been personified. And the last one is the transferred epithet. It is a figure of speech in which an adjective is transferred from one noun to another. The example that we find from the poem is Habard face identity mask. Here the bard face 
energy mask is actually an adjective for the flowers and has been transferred from there and applied to the bird. So students, with this we come to an end of the poem. I hope you will understand the poem better. Please go through the presentation and also read the lines carefully, understand the difficult words and also the poetic devices used in the poem. Thank you.